The first banner of year 7 goes to the A Special Gift Valentine's banner featuring some characters from Fates. This time you can get lovely alts for Hana, Leo, Takumi, and Dual Elise and Sakura. We have a couple interesting new skills to discuss and we'll go over general reviews of all our new units. Let's get started. Our first star focus unit is Valentine's Hana. You can get her at 4 star and 5 star rarity. Hana gets another pretty fun ult, but this time she has her sword back. She is also armored, and for stats, has 40 HP, 42 attack, 46 speed, 41 defense, and 27 res. I feel we have kind of just jumped past 45 base speed because with this banner, there are now more units with 46 base speed instead. Slightly concerning. Hana would have been the new fastest armor in the game, but technically someone else on this banner beats her with a super boom. Regardless, very fast arm unit, but that comes at the cost of lowest base HP in the game for a melee armor. Hana has good attack and defense, and her res isn't that high, but she should be able to tank a hit, at least a hit. She has defense and res super boons, and if you want to hit 200 BST for Arena, you will need one of those. Very interesting stat spread. Compared to Winter Manuela, another 4 star focused sword armor, Hana has more attack speed and defense, and lower HP and res. For skills, Hana brings Ignis as her special, she then has Special Fighter 3 and Armored Stride 3. BK had taken Special Fighter 4 with them, but if it comes back, more fodder to inherit it with. As for Armored Stride, it's on Legendary and Fallen Edelgard, but it's clear Assault Troop has kind of been the new hotness if you want movement. For her new Inheritable Sword, Hana has the Petal Fall Blade Plus, 14 Might, and if the user has more than 25% HP, grant plus 5 attack and speed during combat, and if you outspeed the enemy, you get full no follow up 3 effects and plus 5 true damage on hit. I would say Petalfall Blade is probably at least top 3 for Inheritable Swords, if not the best behind the Arcane Sword. Honestly, it might be equal if it wasn't for Excited Specials. Funnel Follow Up from the Weapon Slot is really strong, and you don't need to use it in the B Slot, Secret Slot, or get it from one of those new C Skill Buffs. Omni Breaker is good from the Arcane Sword, but No Follow Up is way better for fast units, and you even get another plus 5 damage per hit. If you take the Speed Refine, this weapon essentially grants plus 10 attack and plus 8 speed, which is also pretty good. This is the kind of inheritable weapon I want to see with how strong the arcane weapons are coming out. Pedophile Blade is going to be great for all unit types and lets Flyers and Cavaliers not need to run flow skills. The defense in the follow portion is also pretty good as well. In terms of play style, there's a lot of Winter Manuela builds you can look to inspiration for. For Hana's base kit, Pedophile Blade combines no follow up with Special Fighter's extra cooldown and guard effects to just be incredibly annoying to any slower foes. Like Winter Black Knight, these super fast Special Fighter armor units can just run you over if you do not keep up, and they eventually get to specials really fast. Hana has Armored Stride for 2 movement, but you're gonna have to be solo to make it work. If you want to run Armored Stride, you are free to run solo skills and ideal A skills will trigger from the movement buff. Not a lot of defense if you go for attack and speed stacking, but if you can get a special fighter 4, then it does come with healing on special trigger, it's better than nothing. For the common save skill builds, I do think Leaf's Arcane Sword is generally better strictly because of excited specials. That lets hardy fighter builds run Aegis or Pavis, and even special fighter gets to now instantly charge bonfire in one hit. Petalfall Blade and special fighter save builds could get away with no excited specials, but you do have to be doubling to trigger things like Ignis on that second hit. If you want to go with the Distant Counter setup, then this banner has Attack and Speed Far Save for maximum speed investment. We also have Fierce Breath as a Sacred Seal if you want to run a non-Special Fighter B skill. Like Winter BK, if you want to be aggressive, Petalfall Blade could be fun for Assault Troop builds, and you could also run Special Spiral 4 to pierce damage reduction skills. Sadly, Hana cannot run Vital Astra, that would have been really scary. Overall, Hana is another speedy sword armor 4 star focus unit. Whatever Winter Manuela can run, Hana can definitely do the same with even more attack and speed. Next up on the banner is Valentine's Leo, who is now a green bow cavalier. The bow cavalier situation continues to be an odd one because after all these years, there are still zero red or blue bow cavs. When they introduced colored bows and daggers to the game, it 100% was to let them fill up banners for whatever color they wanted. Regardless, this Leo will stand out green or not. For stats, he has 37 HP, 45 attack, 31 speed, 16 defense, and 45 res. He has an attack super boon, and no bow calf has gone past 40 base attack. 45 res is actually insane for this class type. The highest base res for any bow calf was only 30, so Leo becomes a very unique unit. As a trade-off, he has the lowest base defense in the class, and 37 HP ain't super high either. How will Leo make this common mage stat spread work as a bow calf? For old skills, he's going to come with Iceberg, which is expected, and then Attack and Defense Far Trace for Kanto. Leo's Dust Bloom Bow has 14 Might and Excite Specials. At start of player and enemy phase, if foes are in line with Leo and they have less res, then Leo inflicts minus 7 defense and res on them, and also the gravity status. 
If Leto initiates combat or is within two spaces of an ally, he gets plus five total stats and the following effects occur based on Leo's res minus the foe's res. If he has one or more resistance, Leo makes a follow-up attack. Four or more gives 20% res as true damage. If he has seven or more, then he initiates combat. Leo gets offense and a follow-up and 30% damage reduction for one hit. So, Dust Bloom Bow is quite a neat weapon. It essentially has defense res and gravity ploy effects, and it's better because it procs on both phases, similar to Gregor's sword. That means Leo can send his debuffs down one lane when his turn starts, and then when he moves to a new space, the debuffs will then apply again, potentially letting him gravity and debuff more enemies. Since it hits everyone in a line, Leo can actually lock down quite a lot of enemies. With 45 base res, Leo should be able to win a lot of checks. As for combat, Exoid Specials, Free Fall Up Attacks, and True Damage is excellent. Leo has to win more res checking, and they use in combat stats for that one. He has 50 res with the weapon, so anyone less than 43 res activates the full weapon. The 20% area of res True Damage also equates to 10 True Damage, which is not bad at all, and Leo can easily stack more resistance to improve all these effects and checks. In wrestling, they gave him offense and no follow up. Despite being kind of slower, this acts as a check to see if faster units bring defense and no follow up. If they do not, Leo can still double them. As for the 30% DR, this guy already tanks magical attacks well, but his physical bulk is garbage. We discussed this issue with mages with this stat spread, and Leo's answer is damage reduction. But wait, there's more. Leo brings the new inheritable A skill, Remote Mirror. If unit initiates combat, grant plus 7 attack, plus 10 res, and reduce damage from the first attack by 30%. The res version of Remote Sparrow is already here. It's sort of an alternative to Mirror Impact if you feel Fall of Denial isn't worth having anymore. Instead, you can get damage reduction, but it's one time only. For Leo and his bow, this means he gets 51% DR for the first hit. That's not too bad, but even that may not be able to save him from a strong physical hit. Into mages though, good lord. For playstyles, Leo offers debuff and gravity support, which is pretty unique as a perk. These ploy effects work on both phases, so Leo can lock down multiple lanes with gravity. It also hits all foes in the line if Leo has higher res. In Aether Raids, you could potentially gravity four enemies before the enemy gets to go, and many have compared him to Sather and her turn ending mechanic. Pretty accurate description considering their combat perks as well. I would say Remote Mirror should be kept as Leo will now get 60 res to do his in-combat checks and that gets him 12 extra true damage along with it at 51% DR. Not too shabby. Far Trace is needed if you want Kanto and for the C-slot you have a couple options. Rouse Bus for more stats is solo, Tax Smoke 4 would give Leo better protection on the enemy phase and it could work out if his gravity is a threat that he normally can't handle. Menace skills don't match the 5 space range of bow cows, but if Leo is close enough, attack and speed menace is interesting, you won't overlap debuffs, and he gets attack and speed field boss. On the topic of speed, wind sweep is one of the ways to get around his terrible defense. Dust Bloom Bow has offense and a follow up to cancel out wind sweep's downside, and Leo has some speed to work with. Obviously, he's mostly only gonna work into slow tanks, but hey, distant counters still everywhere. For specials, Iceberg is good, and you can proc in two hits if Leo tanks a counter. You could use Heavy Blade for extra cooldown, and the same applies for Deadeye. Otherwise, one cooldown specials aren't bad either. With his Sky High Resistance, if you want to fight dragons and completely laugh at healers, Mystic Boost 4 is an option. It gives Leo some healing as well. Maybe worth considering if healers do well in 2023. Overall, very interesting all for Leo, and honestly, there's some neat things you can do with him. Moving perks like Far Trace Con to provide options to hit foes with gravity and his debuffs. One Sweep can help with his low defense, and you could also even run a Ruse B skill to further lay down long range debuffs. He has good damage if you can hit twice, and the dude will tank mages very well. Our next banner unit is Valentine's Takumi, who we knew the least about from the Fade channel. Takumi is actually a blue armored mage with 40 HP, 40 attack, 46 speed, 20 defense, and 31 res. What is speed super boon? I believe this makes Takumi the fastest armor in the game, and you can take an attack super boon as a bonus too. He does not really look like an armor unit at all, but don't underestimate Takumi's tankiness. For old skills, Takumi has Luna as his special and is going full speed with Swiss Stance 3 and Savvy Fighter 3. Only the second unit ever with Swiss Stance 3 and Savvy provides no follow up and 30% damage reduction. Takumi's weapon is the Dawn Sweep box and I liked it better when we knew less about the guy. This weapon has a lot going on. First, Exoid Specials. If Takumi has more than 25% HP, he gets plus 5 tall stats and inflicts attack and speed debuffs on the foe. He always will inflict minus 4 attack and speed, but this can go up depending on the number of allies within 2 spaces who have higher attack than Takumi with a 4 point safety net. 
You then have a speed check with the foe. If Takumi has no less than 4 speed compared to the foe, he gets 1 time 30% DR. If he at least ties with the foe, he gets 7 HP on hit. If Takumi has 4 or more speed and the foe uses an offensive special and the foe is red, Takumi inflicts plus 1 special cooldown before the foe attacks. Good lord. To simplify, if Takumi is near 2 allies and they have higher flat attack, he inflicts minus 10 attack and speed. You subtract 4 attack from Takumi for this check, making it easier to meet. For the speed checks, if Takumi is completely outsped, meaning the foe has 5 or more speed than him, then he will not activate any of these perks. Meanwhile, if Takumi outspeeds by 4 or more, he gets everything. Or he at least can get everything. For that plus 1 cooldown before the foe attacks mechanic, Takumi needs weapon triangle advantage and the foe must be using a damage special. Basically, he can uncharge specials but only against red enemies. For everyone else, he gets DR, healing, and lots of stats, including basically a 15 speed advantage. Takumi won't have an issue having nearby allies because he has attack and speed far safe. If foe is ranged and initiates combat, trigger savior and grant plus 4 attack and speed. Hardy Fighter has basically taken over for far safe arm units, but Takumi's gonna try his best to fight off ranged enemies. We'll see if it's enough. Takumi is basically ready to go out of the gate as a super speedy far saving armored mage. His defense and are not that great at base, but Dawn Sweep Box adds a good amount of bulk with damage reduction and healing. Savvy Fighter adds more DR and full no follow up effects. Unfortunately, Savvy Fighter is enemy phase only, so even if you wanted to run with Armored March, Takumi would not get no follow up or damage reduction from it. He also needs nearby allies to maximize his debuffs and has to win speed checks, so stacking speed is still a priority here. This basically leaves us with far save, and mages don't have cooldown reduction unless you swap to special fighter. If you do that, you could at least retaliate with Iceberg or Luna, but then you lose DR stacking and no no follow up means to call it Takumi's speed could go to waste potentially. Bit of a tough spot, and basically for pure defensive tanking, there is just no way to compete with Hardy Fighter. Arguably dragons are better because of adaptive damage if you wanted magic damage. That being said, Takumi has his speed, and he kind of directly counters the Red Arcane Eclipse Tome, which has a focus on instant special charging. Unless it's an AoE special, Takumi can stop instant specials from those red mages, and Guard will stall them further. Although, assuming Takumi outspeeds anyway, then it doesn't really matter as much. He could be very annoying for super fast glass cannons too. If they don't take him out, and they don't outspeed for a double, then that is an issue. However, Takumi may also fall to brave attacks unless you bring a deflex seal. Lots of things to think about, but generally he should still be pretty decent. Takumi is a more damage oriented far saver. If that interests you, and or you really hate red units with instant specials, then he could still be a solid pickup. Last up for today is Valentine's Dual Elise and Sakura. Extremely exciting unit because Dual Elise brings two new healer skills, including the very first healer damage special. Are they worth grabbing, and how strong are they actually though? Dual Elise will be a cavalry healer with 37 HP, 43 attack, 46 speed, 16 defense, and 27 res. They have attack and speed super boons, and in general, these two blow every other healer out of the water in terms of offense. No one is close in speed, and Elise ties with one other healer for highest attack possible. Just insane stats, but it comes at the cost of any kind of survivability, full glass cannon, and honestly, they will be putting out some damage. For skills, I'm not sure if this is the first unit with their entire kit filled out from the start, but it's definitely not common to have 6 skills immediately. For old ones, Elise has Return Plus, which is the healing reposition. She then has Attack and Speed Catch 4 and Odd Recovery 3. Can't do much better than that. Their weapon is going to be the Dust Dawn Staff, 14 Might, Dazzling Staff to prevent counterattacks, and accelerate specials. If Elise initiates combat or is within 2 spaces of an ally, she gets plus 6 attack and speed, offense and no follow up. Breath type cooldown reduction, and after combat, if she attacked, she inflicts the flash status on the target and foes within two spaces. Basically, they cannot counterattack back. This is literally the first staff with excited specials, and Elise gets even extra cooldown reduction via the extra special charge. You cannot unfortunately prime one cooldown specials like the bombs to be always charged. I think that would have been hilarious. It's quite clear that Dual Elise is a full offensive healer. She has insane tools no other healer can even replicate, and if she outspeeds, she will double thanks to no follow up. After combat, you can also let other allies attack safely. The reason for all the bonus cooldown is that at least brings the first healer damage special. Holy Pressure has 3 cooldown and cannot be charged when using assist skills aka healers cannot use heal to charge the special. 
When it triggers, it deals damage equal to 45% of the foe's res stat. If holy pressure procs, after combat, inflict gravity on the target and foes within one space. To inherit this special, you need Miracle, which is no big deal. The damage portion is essentially a weaker Luna. The math works out the same as cutting the foe's res. For the part about calculating damage, all you need to know is that if the user does not have Wrathful Staff, Holy Pressure's damage also gets cut in half. Elise will be the best user of this special by a large margin because healers have even fewer cooldown options than most other units. They cannot even run flashing a heavy blade, so how are you going to charge this thing considering they also do not accelerate specials? Infantry can run times pulse and armies can use special fighter, but even then you lack both of those aspects which Elise has via her staff. This is going to be a fun special for combat healers, but it is not going to be easy to use. You need outside help like Thor's Worldbreaker. If you can get it going though, this is going to be the first time healers can use their special activation quotes, which has been in the launch of the game since 6 years ago and just has not been used. That is wild. Now, to pair with Holy Pressure, Elise also brings Wrathful Staff 4, which is turning into Poetic Justice, calculate damage from staff like other weapons, inflict minus 4 speed on foes, and unit deals true damage equal to 15% of the foes attack stat. Like Holy Pressure, if Wrathful Staff is disabled, the true damage portion is cut in half. You will need Wrathful Staff 3 to inherit Poetic Justice, and Elise does carry it if you want to go all the way. Ideally, if you're going for Holy Pressure or Poetic Justice, you kinda want both, right? Essentially, Poetic Justice just adds more combat power with speed debuffs and extra true damage equal to a slightly weaker Ruptured Sky, nothing wrong with that. The sad thing is that healers who do get a refine might get screwed if their staff only has built-in Wrathful Staff. This actually applies to regular Elise who wants Dazzling Staff, but we don't know if Dazzling Staff 4 will carry the same extra effects as Poetic Justice. We'll just have to wait and see. While new healer skills are exciting, Dual Elise keeps her dual skill all to herself, grants dominance to unit and allies within two spaces, inflict minus 7 defense res on foes within 3 columns or 3 rows centered on unit. This is very similar to Dual Makai's skill, but the range conditions are different. For dominance, it will grant 14 extra damage if those minus 7 defense res debuffs hit a target. Obviously, you want more attack and speed debuffs as well. This is an excellent status to have, and you can also stack it with exposure for some real fun. Generally speaking, Dua Elise and Sakura are the best offensive healers by a large margin. They initiate safely, double and proc holy pressure on hit number 2. They get bonus attack and speed, inflict speed debuffs, and get true damage scaling with the foe's attack. You then have the exploit specials and extra quin on charge to actually proc holy pressure in one round. It's an insane kit, and no other healer comes close to replicating it. I don't know if we'll even get an arcane staff, but if it does happen, it has to be insane to come close in terms of offensive usage. Basically, it would need exciting specials and or extra kuna. Now, Elise's kit is pretty much ready to go out of the gate. The only thing you may want to change is odd recovery if you just want more combat power. Otherwise, if you just want a damage dealing healer, add on your favorite attack and speed sacred seal. Besides healing and odd recovery's penalty cleanse, Elise's other support traits include the flash status and gravity coming off a of holy pressure. Both of those improve safety for your team. There is maybe an argument for running a console scope to apply gravity and flash since you can then get out afterwards, but you're not going to have any full damage so I don't know if that's worth it. You can also run Miracle if you wanted since Elise puts it on 4 cooldown and can charge it in 2 actions. For some precautions, Mystic Boost disables Wrathful Staff and that kills any kind of damage output. The tier 4 also neutralizes Dazzling Staff so it's quite the hard counter. For other units who disable the sweep effect, Elise is in trouble of getting one shot with any kind of counterattack, as the Fjorm will destroy her completely. Overall, Dual Elise is still the best case scenario for an offensive healer. If Holy Pressure is going to be the only damage special option there, I would hope healers get some support improvements, but if you want pure damage, then you want Holy Pressure, Poetic Justice, and some kind of game plan to get more cooldown reduction. Healers are definitely not going to take over in terms of damage with these additions, but Dazzling Staff does make them annoying. I'm curious to see how many more options they get because healers definitely need some help. That will be it for this banner breakdown, some fun units to start off year 7, and hopefully the gateway is open for more healer buffs. I'm interested in Holy Pressure for obvious reasons, but I'm doing no summoning till I see that next new hero's banner. Good luck if you're going to be spending orbs though, I hope you get what you want. Next up, we will talk about Valentine's Effie, which you can get via the Tempest Trials. Thank you for watching, and hope to see you soon.